Creating an Alignment by Layout, Creation Tool. The second way to create an alignment is to use the alignment creation tools. These tools allow you to create an alignment using specific design conditions. It would otherwise be very difficult to achieve without these tools. They can also be used to modify an alignment once it's already created. Let's see a few situations where the alignment creation tools are very handy. First, to launch the tools, from the ribbon, select the Alignment Creation Tools. Next, enter Violet's Circle for the name of the alignment. The type will be Centerline, since this will represent the centerline of a street. For description, enter a text describing the purpose of the alignment. Then, do not specify any site, as we don't need any interaction between the alignment and other design items. Afterward, for style, use Proposed to differentiate between proposed and existing alignment styles. The layer is set by default from the template settings, and there's no need to change it. Use the Major Minor H plus V geometry points to show major and minor stations, and horizontal and vertical geometry points. Finally, no need to change anything on the Design Criteria tab. The Alignment Layout Tools toolbar now opens. This toolbar will also indicate the name of the alignment you are currently working on. A close attention needs to be paid to this as sometimes, in the heat of the action, you may select the wrong alignment to edit. This toolbar has several tools to perform site-specific design. For example, you can design tangents, curves, and spirals with specific tangency requirements, add or remove PIs, point of intersections, convert AutoCAD lines or arcs to alignment entities, reverse or edit created entities, delete or select sub-entities, and display a tabular view of design elements. Now, let's explore a few of these tools. First, we will be creating an alignment around a cul-de-sac with a 15 meter or 50 foot radius requirement. So let's set that parameter. On the toolbar, click on Curve and Spiral Settings. In the next window, accept Clothoid as the default type of spiral. We are not creating any spiral in this case, so this is irrelevant. Check the Curve checkbox and put 15 meters or 50 feet for the default curve value and click OK. Now, start designing the alignment by running the tangent-tangent -tangent with curves command. It will automatically create a curve with a radius value. Exactly like we specified in the curve and spiral settings whenever we create two subsequent tangents. As recommended earlier, whenever possible, always design your alignment from west to east and south to north. In this case, the alignment should start at the intersection of Lavender Court and Violet's Circle. That point is predetermined for us with the blue line center line representing Violet Circle center line. You can also create this line using multiple AutoCAD drafting options. One is to create two lines perpendicular to the curb line at each end of the street. Then, draw a line from the midpoint to the midpoint of these two lines. Or you can use the AutoCAD constraints option to draw the center line but this is not an AutoCAD course. Therefore, we will focus on civil 3D functionalities. Now that you are set up, you can use the Convert AutoCAD Line and Arcs command to convert AutoCAD entities. This will create tangents and curves for the alignment. Alternatively, you can use any of the line creation tools, if you know your start and end points, or the Tangent-Tangent -tangent No Curves command. The advantage of the tangent-tangent, -tangent, with or without curves, is that you can keep designing without exiting the active command. Let's use the tangent-tangent -tangent with curves command. Click at the intersection of the two streets, with your end object snap mode activated. Then, click on point A, at the east end of the polyline on Violet's circle. Now, we are going to learn how to use fixed and floating line and curve entities. Floating entities are constraint-based alignment geometries. They will maintain tangency between adjacent objects. On the other end, fixed entities are fixed in their position and must be edited directly. They are not affected by the geometry of adjacent entities and do not maintain tangency. The third type of entity is the free entity, line or curve. It is defined by not only one but two entities, on which the free entity is dependent to define its geometry. An instance of this is a fillet between two curves. 
Let's start with Align Entity between point A and B. If you have closed the Alignment Layout tools by mistake, you can always reopen it. Selecting an alignment, then right-click and select Edit Alignment Geometry. Then you can, once again, edit the alignment or add additional data. After clicking a button on the Alignment Layout tools, follow the prompts at the command line. What we want to do next is use the Fixed Line to Points command to add a tangent. Clicking on point A, then point B. At each click, make sure the Center Object Snap Mode is used. Now what we want to do is create the center line alignment of Violet Circle in the cul-de-sac area. An island with inside curb line has already been created for us during the conceptual phase of the project. We need to create the center line with a minimum travel way width of 3.5 meters or 12.5 feet on both ends of the center line. A few reference points from A to G have been created for us to use. Next, we will go from point B to C. Between these two points, the outside radius of the face of the curb is 10 meters or 35 feet. Therefore, we need to create a centerline radius of 13.5 meters or 45 feet. The new curve entity between B and C will also need to maintain a tangency, going from A to B. The command that allows us to do that by using floating curve from entity end radius through point. Once you run the command, you are prompted to select the entity to attach the new curve to. Click on the line between A and B. Enter 13.5 meters or 45 feet when prompted to specify a radius at the command line. For the curve solution angle, press Enter to accept a value less than 180 degrees. Then, when prompted to specify the endpoint of the entity, click on point C. We have now created a curve between B and C. Also, it is perfectly tangent to the previous line entity. Creating tangent and floating entities is one of the main benefits of the alignment layout tools. It's crucial to use these tools when highly accurate alignments are required, especially when designing rail tracks, highways, or airfields. Next, we need a line entity from point C to point D. Simply run a fixed line to Points command and click on the start and end points. Make sure the object snap setting is active to connect the two points. Now that point C and point D are connected, we need to tie point D to point E with an 18.5 meter or 60 foot radius curve. Run floating curve from entity radius through point command. Select the line between point C and point D when prompted for the entity to attach to. When asked to specify a radius, type 18.5 meters or 60 feet. For the solution angle, Press Enter to accept an angle that is less than 180 degrees. Then, when asked to specify endpoint, click on point E. We now have a curve created between points D and E. Moreover, it is perfectly tangent to the previous line entity. Next, create a tangent from E to F, then a floating curve from F to G with a 13.5 meter or 40 foot radius. Last, create a floating line. We could have created a fixed line if we knew the exact location of the start and end points. We are going to demonstrate how to use floating lines that always stay tangent to a curve, whatever the circumstances. Run the floating line, select the entity to attach to, this time the last curve we created. Type PER, an alias for perpendicular, at the command line and press Enter. Move the cursor closer to the first tangent of the alignment. Once you see the perpendicular sign, Click on the alignment to snap the new tangent in place. Now, let's explore a couple of the alignment layout tools. The first thing we need to do is verify our design through a tabular view. On the alignment layout tools, click on the table icon to the far right. The panorama window is displayed. It is used in Civil 3D to display many types of data, such as the point editor, the alignment entities, or other vistas. In this case, it displays the alignment entities. What jumps at us are the warning signs. They represent the sub-entity that violate the specified design criteria. If you were not using a design criteria, you would not have noticed and moved along. But since you have applied a design check, violations will be highlighted for you. You have not purposely set the check. It's a setting that came with this specific template 
and it is activated anytime you create an alignment by layout. To turn it off, select the alignment, right click and select alignment properties. Then go to the design criteria tab. Once there, you can uncheck the design criteria checkbox. We recommend that you leave it checked. This is just so you know where the error warnings are coming from. Now let's fix the warnings. The two culprits are two fixed lines, sandwiching a curve. You can identify them by clicking them in the panorama and watching them getting highlighted in the drawing. As we've mentioned before, fixed lines do not always maintain tangency when edited. In a case like this, using floating entities, when possible, is always recommended. To delete the two lines, on the Alignment Layout Tools, run the Delete Subentity command and click on the two fixed lines. Once you delete the lines, replace them with floating lines by using the command floating line from curve through point. After that, create the two floating lines and check back in the panorama window. The warning signs are now gone and everything looks good. In this table, we can check our radiuses, entities directions, start and end stations, and so forth. Now, zoom to the intersection of Lavender Court and Rose Drive. Let's say you want to keep things tidy and do not want to have the alignment of Lavender Court cross over to the other side of Rose Drive Centerline. What you can do is insert a PI, point of intersection, at the intersection and delete the unwanted excess entity. To do that, use the Alignment Layout Tools.